World Suicide Prevention Day, and we're here today to remember. The circumstances this year are very different, and unfortunately we can't meet and talk with folks who understand what's happened to us and those that we cared about. One of the worst things about losing a loved one to suicide is the feeling that you're alone in this pit of awfulness, that nobody else could understand how you're feeling. The number of times I've heard, I thought it was just me, is terrifying. There are powerful feelings brought on by the loss of a loved one, and they aren't all nice feelings either. Yes, there's sadness. Yes, there's almost always guilt. Yes, there's a search for what went wrong, but there's also anger. You'd have to be a lot more saintly than anyone I know is not to be angry at times with somebody who chose to end their life. That's okay. We'll get angry with folk for far, far less terrible choices. But they chose, not you. Not me, not anyone else. They made a deliberate choice to get away from this world, this life. And whatever else we may think or feel, however much we wish they had not made that terrible choice, they did. And we can't change what has happened. We can't go back and undo what went wrong. We keep looking for reasons. Why did they do this? What went wrong? Whose fault was it? What did I do to cause this? What did I fail to see or do that caused this? Why did they hurt me so much? We didn't choose this. We didn't want this. We can't understand the despair that drove our loved ones to this. It can seem that someone's problem seems so big to them, so impossible to deal with, that this huge tangled mess of fears and hearts and longings and confusion, it takes over everything, every thought, Every word, every dream, so folk can't see a way around it, a way through it, or a way over it. So they see the only way to get by this is to escape from it all. But how do you escape from what's inside you? So folks make the choice to escape, not reckoning on the heavy price there is for that choice. The price that everyone watching knows about far too well. And we go on paying that price long, long afterwards. But. We did try. We didn't want what happened. Others tried too. But it still hurts. It still makes us beat on ourselves. I should have seen it coming. I ought to have. I should have. We keep on blaming ourselves. But what we didn't know, what we didn't see. And there's always this temptation to say it was your fault. Now we know more. But then we didn't. But that doesn't mean we weren't trying. What does that mean? For a start, yes, maybe we could have done better had we known, but we didn't. It wasn't your fault, you didn't choose this. Yet probably everybody watching shares a feeling of guilt. And when we feel guilty, which is an uncomfortable feeling, which we like to push away, to deflect blame from ourselves, but we've got to remember that guilt isn't ours to hand out. Blame belongs with the person who made the terrible choice. It wasn't us that chose. Most times we didn't even see it coming. Our guilt takes away responsibility from where it belongs. With the person making that permanent and terrible decision, it was their choice, not ours. So let's live as our loved ones did, not as they died. We probably can never understand what led folks to making that final decision, why they chose to die. But we can try, even though it's so far from our wishes, hopes and dreams. In the end, we can't know why folks chose to die. Even if we could ask, I reckon most wouldn't be able to tell us. Often the lethal act is a sudden impulse, which becomes an imperative. Whatever choices were made, whatever was said or done, we can be sure that at the end, there was an enormous amount of pain driving that choice. And that pain is now over. And for that, if nothing else, we can be grateful. The thing is, we're all pretty good at hiding from others the bits of ourselves we don't like. Sometimes those bits feel like they're at most of us. When asked, we'll say, I'm fine, like most Scots do. I remember once hearing on the radio an interview with an actor from the Northeast who'd gone to a method acting school in California. It took him a lot of effort to stop the automatic response to the question, and how do you feel about that? To which is, and I must say my, automatic response would be, that's none of your business. How many folks haven't said something very much like that? Or we've just replied, fine, fine. 
no matter what's going on. So we tried to hide our nasty bits, the feelings that are too big, scary and nasty to tell anyone else about. So can we really blame anyone else for doing the same? If we won't talk about the scary stuff, we can't blame others for doing the same. But this is a problem. If we can't learn to share the awful stuff, we'll never find out that our bad bits aren't as awful as we thought they were. They weren't as awful as we thought we were. But the folks we are remembering just now took a choice that this stuff was too awful to tell anyone about and they chose to end their suffering. They made a very bad choice, which saddens us. But remember that without love, there can be no sadness, and that all love ends in sadness. If we hadn't cared, we wouldn't now be hurting. It's always going to be too easy to remember the terrible end, and there's no way around that. It just happens. But there's more, far, far more. Try to remember the love, the joy, the happiness, that will always be with us. The sad memories will always be with us too, but they needn't rule over us. Whatever we believe just now, there is always a possible future. There is always hope. So I'll finish, as I invariably do, with the words from a lady at the funeral of her brother who died by suicide. I share these truths so that I can ask you to try to understand. His life was mostly happy, hopeful, and filled with many more good moments than bad ones. He deeply loved those in his life. We must always remember that his choice was not meant to harm us. It was a choice made from believing the whispers of desperation, which deafen the ears. It was a choice made because his eyes were blind to the small blessings that each new day brings. He wasn't thinking about the hurt and pain he would cause us. He wasn't thinking about things he'd miss the weddings or grandchildren, trips or holidays, or any of the fun things our lives could share. He was simply, in his mind, heart and soul, alone, lost, overwhelmed and helpless, and ending his journey, his life, seemed his only option. So as we say goodbye, please believe that one act, one choice, does not define a life. One act, one choice, is not a legacy. Every moment of compassion, each act of kindness, every shared laugh, his infectious enthusiasm, his warm embrace, quiet conversation, every hope, every dream, that is what defines a life and creates a legacy. Remember the things he did that brought you happiness. Allow the light of fond memories to illuminate the dark corners in your heart. If we remember his love and honour his legacy and journey, then we can understand and say goodbye.